so we're ready to go. Ready to go. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the first meeting of uh, 2012. Can I have everybody please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Can I have the clerk please do the roll call? Council Member Fox? Here. Council Member Gillette? Here. Council Member Glancy? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Bill De La Pena? Present. Mayor Irwin? Here. A uh, request for a continuance of any public hearing or agenda item? We have none. And special presentations and announcements? Uh, this begins the special presentation portion of our city council meeting. Each year on the third Monday in January, people in the United States pause to honor the life and dreams of Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. King, American clergyman, activist, and prominent leader, was an activist in the African American Civil Rights Movement. His main legacy was securing civil rights in the United States. Classroom teachers take the opportunity to pause and teach students about Dr. King, King's legacy of tolerance, equality, and respect. His speech, I Have a Dream, raised public consciousness of ending racial segregation through the civil rights movement. On Monday, January 16th at 9 a.m. at the Oxnard Performing Arts Center, the Martin Luther King Jr. Committee of Ventura County will observe Dr. King's birthday. This event celebrating Dr. King's achievements is open to the general public. Okay, um, do we have any other special announcements? That's it. We are now on to uh, public comments. Can I please have the city clerk announce? This is the time and place for public comments. A speaker card is available for those wishing to address the city council regarding items on the agenda or on a subject when the, within the city's jurisdiction. All remarks should be addressed to the council as a whole, and all documents for city council and the official city records should be presented to the city clerk prior to speaking. Speakers are requested to state their name and community of residence for the record. Under state law, public comment matters may not be considered by the council unless listed on the agenda, but may be referred to the city manager for administrative follow-up. Nine people have presented cards, and pursuant to council standards, speakers are allowed three minutes. The yellow light will display when you have one minute remaining. Thank you, Ms. Lawrence. We actually have 10 speakers, and our first speaker is Westlake High School Dance Team. Good evening, ladies. We appreciate the consideration of the council and that the grant means a great deal to our team. The grant helps us pay for costumes and put on our community clinics so that we may fundraise, which means a lot to us. Last year with the grant, our team got to nationals and won a national title in medium dance. Thank you very much for the grant from Westlake High School Dance Team. Thank you very much. For our next speaker, we have uh, Dr. Ling Linda Oregon with the Discovery Center and Catherine Fudurich. Okay, my name is Dr. Linda Oregon. My name is Catherine Fudurich, and we're both founding members of the Discovery Center for Science and Technology. We are here to uh, thank the city of Thousand Oaks for consideration of the possibility of funding with the Community Enhancement Grant. 
we would like to share a drop of our proposal and also share what's going on related to it. The uh, proposal would set up the Discovery Center Gallery of Creative Thinking. It is designed to enhance, reduce, reuse, recycle, and most importantly, rethink. As incredulous as it may seem, and with all the signs and education and recycling bins around, it's amazing to me that even my neighbors don't know what and how to recycle. So what we're going to be doing is setting up and mimic a real recycling center so the kids will be cranking, sorting things from a conveyor belt, and at the same time the kids are sorting and learning how to do that, the adults will also be absorbing the same material and hopefully we will make a difference. The other part of the grant will fund, will fund the tinkering workshop. It's called the Tinkering Zone. We are currently working on the prototype for that. We have it up for one more month and I would really encourage the community to come out and see what's going on. It is a fairy tale for both kids and adults. Picture a place with tables and materials all over the tables that are um, from recycled donated material and the kids are inventing contraptions and making things that blink and buzz and move and it's not school. It's, there are no rules, it's just fun. It's learning by doing. The, the, set, the place is set up with uh, sorted projects around the room. We have our teens from the community, our Discovery Center teens, that know the science concepts that are working with the kids, and the adults are playing just as much as the kids are. Uh, Kathy is gonna describe some of the things that happen. We're open for one more month through uh, until February 20th, and we're located at 43 West Thousand Oaks Boulevard, right next to Big Five in the old party store. So come to the tinkering, to the tinkering zone where you can make wow projects from recycled materials. Design a flying object and test it in one of our wind tunnels. Make a scribbling robot from recycled stuff. Build amazing structures with over 10,000 blocks that we have. And it's fun for all ages from two through 106. I'd like to conclude by saying that we are a fun project. We're doing very inspiring work. We need volunteers. We need an empty building for two to three years. Someone in Thousand Oaks must want to put their name on a building for two to three years so that we can really do our stuff and not have to worry about taking it down. Uh, check out our website. We have something for everyone. Our adult programs are amazing. Dr. Susan Love is going to speak on new tra treatments for breast cancer on March 8th at the Baxter Auditorium. This is our website www.discoverycntr.org. Thank you for your consideration. And this is just one example of what you can do, how you can recycle an item. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, next we have Jan Smith and she will be followed by John Fonte. Good evening. Happy New Year, Mayor Irwin, council members. It's nice to be here. I'm bringing you news from your chamber, the Greater Conejo Valley Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the first thing that I want to speak about is I always enjoy talking about Leadership Conejo, which is under the auspices of the chamber. And we are going to be meeting here this Friday uh, in the afternoon for our session, which is one of nine, that is inside City Hall. I want to personally thank uh, your city clerk, Linda Lawrence, who has been the facilitator for that day, and all the t department heads that will be participating. So thank you, it's really appreciated. New news, uh, the chamber is currently making plans for a new group uh, that's going to be called the Young Professionals. This will be chamber members that are under the age of 40, so something new and different. Uh, Final plans have not been made out, but we'll keep you posted when this becomes, uh, comes, into, uh, comes into effect. Next thing, 2012 Gala. Uh, this is, as you're all familiar, this is where uh, the Chamber honors our Man and Woman of the Year, Business of the Year, Volunteer of the Year, Corporate Sponsor of the Year, Ambassador of the Year, uh, et cetera. This is coming up uh, on January 27th. We are still taking reservations. It's going to be at the beautiful Four Seasons Hotel. 
We will also be honoring that night our outgoing chairman of the board, Phil Kuntz. So as you all know, this is a great evening. Uh, come visit the website. We're still taking reservations. I want to tell you about our committees. We remind folks that are chamber members that aren't. You can always come and visit a chamber meeting. We have the Government Relations Committee, Education, Human Resources. Now, new this year, we are doing a technology forum once a month. Uh, they are going to be meeting the Thursday of every month, third Thursday, 1145 at the conference center. We also have a manufacturers forum meeting next week, Tuesday, something brand new. Also, the chamber is doing their weekly lunch and learns. We meet at lunchtime on Wednesdays. Topics include online networking, the art of business networking, and safeguards against employment harassment complaints. This is not only open to chamber members, it's open to non-chamber members for a minimal fee of $10. And always we invite folks to come visit our chamber website at www.conejochamber.org. And last but not least, least, please come visit us. We're always open. We're open 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. We're on the corner of Townsgate and Hampshire, and we always enjoy having members, non-members, come visit. That concludes my remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fonte is up, and he will be followed by Amy Peterson. Uh, John Fonte, Thousand Oaks. I would like to ask uh, the full council to uh, pay attention, not like uh, Mr. Glancy and Mr. Fox, who uh, barely raised their heads in the last speaker. I don't think Mr. Fox did at all. He's too busy reading, catching up on, uh, I, I guess, his agenda items. Anyway, John Fonte, good evening to the City Council majority of uh, Fox, Irwin, Gillette, and Glancy, who last year voted themselves lifetime health care benefits for a part-time job a benefit which could cost the taxpayers a million dollars for each of you. And good evening to Council Member Claudia Belde La Pena, who did not. My first comment is regarding Mr. Gillette's appointed planning commissioner, Peter Turpel, who the Federal Trade Commission recently filed a major complaint against. In the newspapers, his response was the equivalent to saying that the dog ate his homework. That was sad but telling. The bottom line is that he should resign or be dismissed from the Planning Commission. Commissioners should all be honorable and with no legal clouds hanging over them. Mr. Turpel can be reappointed if he is eventually exonerated. But I don't expect you guys to do the right thing with this because you recently dismissed an honorable Planning Commissioner and council candidate Al Adam for no legitimate reason other than that you wanted to harm him politically. On another topic regarding the demise of the Redevelopment Agency, I saw Scott Mitnick's uh, embarrassing comments in the newspapers. The city manager sounded like a heroin addict who's been forced to go cold turkey. Scott, you should stay out of politics. Maybe join a 12-step program. Please have respect for the position of city manager. I don't see other city managers with your tongue and constant politicization of the office. Also regarding the re redevelopment agency, if Thousand Oaks and other cities weren't so greedy, then you'd all still have them. The state would not have terminated them. And here's the proof of your greed. You declared just about all of Thousand Oaks Boulevard and Moore Park Avenue up to the high school as blighted. Well, that's just plain ludicrous. So what else was Sacramento to do to stem the abuse by local elected officials? who reward their developer friends and campaign contributors. Regarding the proposed drive through Starbucks on Thousand Oaks Boulevard that will have no indoor seating, it's also quite comical to see this proposal as the first one under your new specific plan for the boulevard, which is to make it a walking destination. And to hear Mr. Gillette's traffic commissioner and Caruso developer Rick Lemo say how wonderful it is just made me laugh. And when are we going to start seeing those 70-foot buildings, which, if you include sidewalks, may cleverly average to only 50 feet in height, your legal limit? Also want to see, I also see that you want the lakes next door to now be all restaurants instead of mixed retail and restaurants. So do you think that will allow Caruso to finally generate the necessary profits so the city can start making some rental income instead of the dollar a year rent you give them? 
I doubt it because you don't require CPA audited financial statements to prove he doesn't make the requisite process, and I doubt you ever will. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fonte. Uh, Amy Peterson, followed by Max Ferenger. Mayor Irwin and City Council members, my name is Amy Peterson and I am the president of the Maple Elementary Student Council. And on behalf of our school, we would like to thank you for considering us for the Community Enhancement Grant. We are very grateful for the recommendation and the chance to be able to enhance our garden to support our learning. Last year with the city's help, my class planted a salad garden, which we harvested and enjoyed eating at the end of the year. The fifth graders enjoyed planting tomatoes, basil, and oregano. At the end of the year, they made sauce and enjoyed pizza. We appreciate your support for a better garden. Thank you. Hello, Mayor and City Council members. My name is Max Farragher and I'm a student at Maple Elementary. Thank you for considering us for the grant. We are very excited about the opportunity to expand our garden. Last year, my class planted a salsa garden and I learned how easy it was to plant cilantro. It was delicious. We have learned a lot about the environment from our harvest garden, and we are looking forward to learning, planting, and eating more. Thank you. Max and Amy, very good job. It sounds like you're really doing something great out there. Uh, next, we have Brian Clark, and he will be followed by Rudy Gonzalez. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, my name is Brian Clark. I'm a resident of Thousand Oaks. I am uh, president of the Mates Foundation as well. We have an application from the Community Enhancement Grants before you tonight. I wanted to come before you to thank you for your time to consider our grant, thank the committee for its recommendation uh, of our grant, and should we be awarded that grant, uh, we'll be using it to further beautify the Meadows Arts and Technology Elementary School campus to provide some needed shade on our kindergarten playground, as well as uh, incorporating several thematic lesson plans of uh, environmental studies and art into the area that we'll be beautifying. Um, so should you choose to approve the grants, I wanted to be the first to say thank you very much. Thank you for coming this evening, Mr. Clark. Rudy Gonzalez, followed by Nick Kidway. Good evening, Mayor Irwin, Council Members, Mr. Mitnick. My name is Rudy Gonzalez. I'm a resident of Thousand Oaks. I'm uh, Southern California Edison's Public Affairs Manager here in Thousand Oaks. I'm here this evening to kind of turn the tables on you. Uh, the city usually presents resolutions and proclamations to recognize individuals and organizations. I'm here this evening to present a resolution to the city of Thousand Oaks. As you may or may not know, Southern California Edison is celebrating our 125th year of service to our customers. The main thing we have in common with the city is that your residents are our customers. Edison strives to serve your residents well. In order to do so, we require a strong working relationship with the cities we do business in. I'm here this evening to express our appreciation on behalf of our board of directors for being a strong partner with Edison over the past 47 years or so of the city's existence. With that being said, I would like to present this resolution of appreciation to the city of Thousand Oaks, and if you don't mind, I'd like to read the resolution. To the city of Thousand Oaks, whereas in this year 2012, Edison International, the parent company of Southern California Edison and Edison Mission Group, is celebrating its 125th anniversary, and whereas Edison International is proud to share 125 years of growth and partnership with the communities we serve, and whereas Southern California Edison presently provides electric utility service to nearly 14 million people in 15 counties of Central, Coastal, and Southern California, and whereas working together we can help homeowners and businesses save money through energy efficiency, prepare for the arrival of clean electric vehicles, build infrastructure needed for California's economic growth, and invest in the future of our communities, our schools, and our students. 
Whereas to celebrate this milestone with the city of Thousand Oaks, now therefore be it resolved that by unanimous decision, the Board of Directors of Edison International extends its appreciation to the city of Thousand Oaks for being a valued partner and a significant part of our history, and be it further resolved that Edison International looks forward to a lasting partnership as we embark upon our next 125 years. The resolution is signed by our uh, CEO, Ted Craver, and uh, Southern California Edison President Ron Letzinger. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez, and we'll make sure to hang that prominently. Thank you. Mr. Kidway, and Mr. Kidway will be followed by Vivian Vina. I begin the name of God, who is most beneficial, most merciful, Nick Iqbal Kidway, resident of Newberry Park. Uh, curious why there was no announcement of the, about the closed session. Uh, I don't know one important thing about the salary of the uh, new city attorney or appointment should have been announced. Uh, maybe I was in the little boy's room, maybe it was announced. Uh, but the city likes to do things in the dark. I don't know why. I uh, hope you all had a good holiday. A lot of the citizens in the city did not because the city hall was closed and not only were the staff members gone for the two weeks, but a lot of the people took extra days off. And nowadays with the internet, uh, you send emails, you find out, uh, oh, I'll be back on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, getting paid full while the taxpayers are slaved away, uh, that's what has happened. Uh, your motto is uh, extraordinary service to the citizens we serve is our purpose and product, but the Newberry Park Library was completely closed. I mean, uh, this is the way to save money. Uh, I don't have as much fun as the guy that had the 999 plan, but uh, I would like the TOTV to show the 3030 plan that I have uh, given before. This is what is needed, a 30% cut in the salary of people who are making about 150,000. That's about a half, about a dozen staffers. 30% uh, cut in staff except in the library and the police. Uh, these people are playing games, I mean, uh, at City Hall. Uh, it's ridiculous. I mean, uh, uh, in the business world, uh, people have cut back 70%. And got many of my customers and friends are out of business. And 30% cut in perks, uh, the uh, TV. Uh, I don't know if people sh saw that. Uh, it's just ridiculous to... Uh, have government uh, folks living better off uh, than the taxpayers are. Uh, TOTV, if you can show uh, the uh, rhino. Uh, uh, we are being beat by our neighbors, uh, Simi Valley. Right now, uh, they had a police sting at the massage parlors, uh, and uh, the city attorney is crafting uh, an ordinance to protect uh, the city from that, while over here we did nothing except uh, political uh, gamemanship to send a letter to the Jan Small about the Hooters, and nothing uh, is being done to stop uh, Spearmint Rhino from coming. And uh, when it will come, I mean, it will be too late. I mean, we have Thousand Oaks is special. It's different. I mean, uh, uh, well, call me prude or whatever, but a lot of my members uh, believe in that. One of the greatest news was about the redevelopment agency, and it was very disgraceful to see the city manager's comments like that. I mean, this, does, this is not right. I mean, he's a graduate from Cal State Fullerton like I am. I mean, that's where the money is going, the schools. The state is not uh, corrupt or bad like uh, the city manager tries to make it out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kidway. And our last speaker, for our last speaker, we will have Vivian Vina. Good evening, Mayor Irwin and Council Members. My name is Vivian Vigna, and I'm the principal of Sequoia Middle School, the home of the Discover Academy of Applied Sciences and Engineering Exploration. And I'm here this evening representing the teachers of the academy and want to take just a few minutes to th say thank you for consideration of the academy grant requests. The Discover Academy is proud of their trail adoption off of Windy Drive, which is a continuation of the Potrero Ridge Trail which is part of the community service component of the academy. They're excited about the possibility of creating their own work team to potentially adopt more trails, 
which has been encouraged by the Ranger due to the great work they are currently doing. Your approval of this grant would provide funding for the bus to get to the trails, gloves, trimmers, weed extractors, and flip cameras to document their efforts. We are well aware of the work and effort that goes into grants and appreciate your time in providing the opportunity for us to apply and your consideration of our grant application. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Vimia. If, if um, the count... Okay, I'll, I'll just mention that we're going to switch that around. Since we have so many people waiting here for the um, community uh, grants, if the council agrees that we'll just move that? No problem. Okay, uh, we're first going to do the uh, consent calendar, item seven. Anybody? Dr. Glancy? Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. I uh, move um, approval of the consent calendar. Vote, please. The motion carries 5-0, and I'll read the ordinance title for item 7-G-2, and it's an ordinance amending ordinance number 1215-NS regarding levying of special taxes within the Community Facilities District number 1994-1, the Marketplace Public Pedestrian Traffic Circulation and Parking Facilities. Thank you. We have no public hearings, and we are going to move to item 11, Committee, Commission, and Board Reports. Uh, item 11A, Community Enhancement Grant Award Recommendations from the uh, Community Funding Review Committee. And Santo, Santo, I'll just, Santo and Rod Cordova will be presenting. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Mayor Irwin, members of the council. My name is Rod Cordova, public works staff member and liaison for the Community Funding Review Committee. Uh, the Funding Review Committee reviews funding requests and makes recommendations to the council regarding two grant programs, the Sporting uh, Sport Facilities Endowment Fund and the Community Enhancement Grant Program. Tonight, the committee will uh, present its recommendations for the 2011-2012 Community Enhancement Grant Program. The Community Enhancement Grant Program provides funding for nonprofit community and school groups who conduct uh, community beautification or environmentally related projects that benefit the Thousand Oaks community. Uh, the committee chair, Lauren Riem, unfortunately was unable to attend tonight, so fellow committee member Santo Ricobono will speak on behalf of the committee. Good, morning. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Council members. Uh, the Community Funding Review Committee reviewed 25 applications for the Community Enhancement Grant Award. Four of those applications were incomplete, so there were 21 applications that we had to review, score, and, and rank. There was $45,000 in available funds. There were 77500 in funding requests. As part of the, we, the scoring system, uh, we reviewed the applications and the, they scored on a, a scale of a 100, 97 to the bottom was zero in the incomplete applications. We decided to fund the, the projects that scored 50 or higher, except for uh, one of the applications was able to be funded through a different program, so the, the uh, one application which scored 47 points was actually uh, recommended to be funded as well. Is that all we have? All right, do we have any questions for these gentlemen? Uh, I, I actually have one uh, question, I guess, for Mr. Cordova. Is that 45,000, is that what we've done in the past few years, or is that amount going down? Uh, no, forty-five thousand is um, what's allocated on a yearly on a yearly basis. So, it's hasn't gone down, hasn't gone up. It's remained forty-five thousand for probably about the last ten years. Now, so. All right. Thank you, Mr. Cordova. Dr. Glancy. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Now, uh, gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for your uh, involvement and your dedication to this project. It's very important to the community. And we really thank you. We know it's, it's really tough to uh, weed out 
programs that you know would benefit. We just can't do it. But I, I thank you very much for, for doing this. Uh, with that said, I uh, move your recommendations one and two. Okay. Um, very good. Ms. Bill Delapena. Thank you. Thank you. I, I am definitely in support of the motion. I also wanted to point out since most, if not um, all, are related to the environment one way or another and beautification of the environment, I was particularly impressed to see that Lang Ranch Elementary is now receiving its, I believe, the first garden which will teach the children how to compost and, and uh, harvest everything that they plant. I think that is vitally important to the um, education, in fact, elementary education of all of our students. So thank you very much for the work that you have done. Mr. Gillette. Gentlemen, thank you so very much for your service. Uh, this is an exceptional service and a very, very helpful. I just had one question. Of the four applications that were ruled uh, incomplete, is there a follow-up mechanism? Was there a follow-up me mechanism to go back to them to explain um, why uh, they were incomplete to help them in the next, if, should they so choose in the next go around uh, that they might be able to do a better job of completing it? There were a couple follow-up emails uh, just reminding them of the uh, submission deadline. Um, they initiated an application, completed some uh, basic information and then did not complete any of uh, other information related to a project proposal. In some cases, they just indicated the, the name of the organization and address and had no project proposal at all. Um, but they're certainly encouraged to, uh, you know, apply again for next year's, next year's grant. Okay, I, I understand sometimes, especially with small, uh, small nonprofits, uh, filling out applications and what have you can become kind of onerous when you're dealing with all volunteers and I just want to make sure that uh, they understand why they were why they why they were incomplete that I was getting at thank you thank you we also have um, three speaker cards in favor of the uh, recommendation um, mr. Rico Bono thank you very much for your efforts this is really one of my favorite city programs can we have a vote please Councilmember Gillette. Motion carries 5 0. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we are going back to item 9A, department reports, and this is the uh, proposed successor agency to Thousand Oaks Redevelopment Agency, and the uh, city manager will be doing the presentation. Uh, Mr. or Madam Mayor, members of the council. Okay, this is agenda item 9A, and I'll provide some uh, background comments, and then our city uh, interim city attorney, Chris Norman, will explain the, the legal components of this. So the, the task in front of you is pretty straightforward. It's a resolution uh, establishing the city of Thousand Oaks as the successor agency to the Thousand Oaks Redevelopment Agency in compliance with uh, state law uh, uh, AB 26 and AB, or just AB 26. The, um, we've been in front of you a number of times on this as well as giving you updates on the state budget situation. And what we have in, in front of us, what this um, represents, and you're not taking any action tonight in terms of committing funds or anything like that. It's just simply um, setting up the successor agency. But uh, what we're looking at here is um, th this is a, a, a crisis. The, the city of Thousand Oaks and 425 other cities in California are in a crisis mode due to no, no action of, of their own. Uh, the state is unable to balance its budget. It hasn't been able to balance its budget in many years, and it's used a number of um, interesting maneuvers to, to do so. And uh, the, the state simply has a, a problem that's not due to the recession. It's just a structural budget problem. It, it keeps cutting revenue sources and growing its bureaucracy and uh, requirements. So what it has been doing, the state has been doing the last several years, is turning 
to other uh, governments, in particular um, local governments and cities and counties, to take from the local communities in order to balance the state budget. So that's what this represents. Um, reference was made to some newspaper articles which describe the situation. This is a, the largest uh, money grab in um, our state's history, maybe the nation's history. So what they're trying, what the state has done is decided to dismantle redevelopment, which is really your local property tax dollars in the project areas being used for local infrastructure, for schools, for affordable housing, uh, a low income uh, senior and disabled uh, resident uh, financial assistance. So that money is um, in the process of being uh, unwound. And there's a long history of the state taking money from cities. Our general fund has given up tens of millions of dollars over the years and the redevelopment agency has given up um, over 13 million dollars already. So it, it's a recurring um, situation. What are we looking at here? We're looking at the state not just taking the property tax revenues that will be generated going forward. We're looking at the state coming in and going into our bank accounts and seizing probably over now it looks like $20 million. We're still trying to figure out how much money we're talking about. But 20, uh, it appears about 20 million, maybe more, of uh, local property tax dollars being seized. Uh, we're looking at um, assets, land and buildings and that type of thing being forced to a, a fire sale. By fire sale, I mean we put them on the market and just sell them to whoever will buy, buy the properties and the assets. And uh, we're looking at losing uh, more than $100 million in future uh, revenues. These are funds that are locally generated that have historically been spent on uh, local projects, fully disclosed in a very transparent manner where the money goes. Um, and, and so we're looking at losing uh, these revenue sources and, and these assets. So if you take what's going on in Thousand Oaks and you multiply it by 425 cities, you're looking at an extreme crisis. Um, we had a number of projects that were in the works that would be under construction right now, such as uh, the school, with the schools with the Canal Valley uh, Continuation High School, their, uh, the Canal Unified School District's maintenance facility. We were looking at improvements on the boulevard, three and a half million dollars worth of, of improvements, undergrounding utilities on the boulevard from Duesenberg all the way up to the Westlake, um, the city of Westlake Village property line. That's a six to ten million dollar project. Uh, that won't happen. Um, a, a variety of drainage projects. Um, Herbs Road uh, is gonna, in the process of being improved. The money was going to go to that. I mean, the list goes on. We have a lot of low income seniors who get uh, assistance for utilities. Spend a couple hundred thousand dollars a year on that for 600 low income seniors. That will likely uh, be gone. Uh, dozens uh, or hundreds of uh, low income seniors that live in mobile home parks that get assistance for um, improvements. That money will be off the table. We have the executive director from the Area Housing Authority of Ventura County in the audience. Um, millions of dollars that would flow to his agency in many mansions. That, that's going to be lost. The schools, the local schools will lose uh, about a million two a year, per, perhaps even more. So we're still trying to work our way through all that. I was just rattling off some examples of the local revenues and local projects that will not take place unless there's some action legislatively in Sacramento. And there is an effort right now to do just that. Um, so we, ha and, and we have a long history with a very successful redevelopment agency here in Thousand Oaks. A lot of great projects uh, have been done uh, over the years. Also, we heard from the Discovery Center earlier today, money that's been set aside for that project, uh, that's in, in jeopardy of, of being lost. Those are just some examples. Um, Again, I'd like to stress that what's going on in Sacramento is self-inflicted. It's not due to the um, recession. It's unfortunate that our state government has done this to, to local communities. Okay, so that's really sort of it by way of the, um, the background. The League of California Cities, California Redevelopment Association are trying to work through um, some new legislation and work on some sort of compromise uh, with the legislature. Uh, it's, it's a difficult uh, situation that, that we confront. So again, tonight is just the first step, the success and successor agency. Then we would come back next, the next meeting to deal with the housing component. And uh, we'll see what the proposed legislation in Sacramento does as far as um, providing some more time to sort through 
all of this. But again, we don't know the totality of how much um, will be seized from the city of Thousand Oaks. We have bond issues too, council, to remind you that when bond issues were done, those are legal documents. Uh, investors provided funds to the community to build projects that have been de delineated. The state's ability to come in and seize those assets. We were, we've been talking with a number of uh, bond attorneys. Uh, there might be bondholder uh, lawsuits saying, hey, we provided money, you need to uh, fulfill your um, promises and build what you said you were, were, go were going to build. So with this uncharted water, waters, uh, municipalities have not seen this before. And my final comments would be this is an example of um, no good deed goes unpunished, that here we are, extremely conservative municipality with very solid bond ratings. We've built reserves. We've, we've been told to build reserves, uh, to have uh, multi-year plans, to have a, you know, a plan for your infrastructure system in your community, and we've been preparing for that. And because we have resources to do that, the state is saying since it's broke, it can come in and take our assets away. So we're being criticized for being uh, conservative uh, financially and now we're, we're stuck in a bind. Um, that's where we're at, and I think our city attorney now wants to explain the legal side of it. Thank you, Mr. Mitnick. I'm gonna briefly go over the legislation and what the Supreme Court did on December 30th and um, outline some next steps and some of the legislation that uh, Mr. Mitnick mentioned. AB 26 um, dissolves redevelopment agencies and sets up a process for the city to become the successor agency and to wind down the affairs of the RDA. AB 27 allows cities to continue redevelopment instead of being dissolved by participating in a voluntary alternative redevelopment program or pay to play, as you may have heard, by making a one-time payment of $5.8 million and for Thousand Oaks subsequent annual payments of $1.4 million. By making those payments, the redevelopment agency would be allowed to continue. Um, the purpose of these two bills was to circumvent Prop 22, which was um, a constitutional amendment passed by initiative in 2010 to prevent the state legislature from taking various local revenues, including redevelopment funds. The CRA and the League of Cities filed suit to challenge these two bills, claiming that they violate Prop 22. Um, the California Supreme Court took jurisdiction and rendered its opinion on December 30th in the case of CRA versus Mato Santos. The court ruled in the worst possible way for RDAs. Without going into too much legal detail, the court unanimously held that AB 26, the dissolution law, was constitutional because RDAs exist by statute enacted by the state legislature. Since the legislature created the RDAs, they can dissolve them. This is a standard legal doctrine for legislative power. The court, the court also concluded that there was nothing in Proposition 22 to indicate that the legislature in, um, could not dissolve RDAs. On the other hand, the court found by a six to one majority that AB 27 was unconstitutional in its entirety because of Proposition 22. Um, Proposition 22 has language in it that prohibits indirect transfer of tax increment to any state agency, and that's what AB 27 did. The court also concluded that because of express severance provisions found in AB 27, the intent was for AB 26 to survive if AB 27 was struck down. The final result, the dissolution re legislation survives and the pay to play is invalidated. Because the court stayed the implementation of AB 26 pending its decision, the court made some judicial reforms to AB 26 to extend certain time-sensitive deadlines required by that legislation. The extension was four months, which is the length of the stay. With those revised dates in mind, here is what happens next under AB 26. By February 1st, RDAs are dissolved as a matter of law, and the successor agency takes over all of the assets of the RDA. The city is the default successor agency. The successor agency has very limited powers, and its main purpose is to dispose of RDA assets expeditiously while maximizing value. The successor must be chosen by January 13th. 
An oversight committee must be formed by no later than May 1st, which includes seven members, two of which are appointed by the Board of Supervisors, two by the Mayor, one appointed by the largest special district, which is the Ventura County Fire Protection District, which in effect is the Board of Supervisors, one is appointed by the County Superintendent of Education, and one by the Chancellor of Community Colleges. The Oversight Committee will review many, if not most, of the decisions of the successor agency moving forward, including improving a recognized obligation payment schedule. The County Auditor Controller will make all payments to pass-through entities and the successor agency per um, the enforceable obligation payment schedule on file. Now, there is some legislation um, pending, potentially. There is Senate Bill 654 being sponsored by Senator Steinberg, which would allow successor agencies, um, I'm going to talk about housing assets, but to allow um, those housing assets to include the low mod res reserve fund. SB 659 by Senator Padilla would extend the dates for compliance with AB 26 out a few months. We're hoping for April 15th um, rather than February 1st for the dissolution. That will give time for um, agencies to figure out what's going on and perhaps there will be some other legislation coming out of Sacramento that will revive redevelopment in probably a lesser form. At the next meeting on January 24th, um, the, the agency will need to adopt an amended enforceable obligation payment schedule that, and later the city as successor agency will have to adopt a recognized obligation payment schedule. Those are important because only payments on those schedules um, can be dispersed through the county auditor controller's office. Now, there will also be an election to designate the agency's housing assets, which are kind of carved out separately. There's a little time we have till February 1st to make that decision, but um, the city could become the um, owner of those assets or the uh, area housing authority. We'll have more detail on that at the next meeting. There's also an, another lawsuit that's been filed um, by the city of Cerritos that along with several other cities in Sacramento, and they've asked for a restraining order on the implementation of AB 26 based on, on different issues that were before the Supreme Court. Um, the hearing for that um, preliminary injunction is January 27th, so we'll have more information then, but I'm, I'm not optimistic that um, the court will grant the injunction given that the Supreme Court's already rendered a decision. Um, that's all we know. It's a very fluid situation. Legislation could, could come down changing this any time. Um, it's, it's the city attorney's recommendation that we, we move forward with implementing AB 26 until either a deadline is extended or we're told that we can do something else. As the city manager mentioned, there is a lot of loose ends to tie up. The legislation is not well drafted. Um, there's, there are issues dealing with what to do with the bond proceeds and what money we, the, uh, the agency has to give over to the auditor control or, or keep. We'll work those out over the next few weeks. So the first step here is to just um, reaffirm that the city will become the successor agency and we will keep you in the loop as things progress. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Prescott, were you going to speak? Uh, only if there are questions. Ms. Bill de la Pena. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have a question regarding the Oversight Committee, and you, the city attorney, outlined the, um, um, the, the, the uh, composition of the board. Is the Oversight Board different for each and every city? Yes, for each redevelopment agency will have its own oversight board. Okay, so then, for example, the, um, is it possible that one, that the county, members of the County Board of Supervisors could be serving on various oversight boards? For that would be possible. Okay, and is it possible that the County Superintendent of Education 
which is the school board. No, that's not the school board. That's the um, education board. Same thing with that, that members could serve on various oversight committees. I don't see anything in this legislation mm -hmm. that would prevent that. Okay. And... Okay, so there could be an overlap then. That's, that's uh, what I was curious about. Then the other question I have is regarding, we already discussed housing assets. And then is the, uh, the second one, which will be come, bef come before the council or the planning commission, is the amendment to the lakes, which is the development agreement. Is it possible that that could come back before the planning commission or the council in a renegotiated format? as a result of what is happening? I think the plan at this point is to have those contracts to which the agency is a part amend those and then the um, specific plan amendment would go through the normal planning commission council process. Okay, so it's, it's entirely possible then to renegotiate, for example, the, the lease agreement? It's, I don't think renegotiate is, is the word I would use, I think there are some minor amendments to it that the um, lakes, as the applicant, want, want to change um, dealing with the composition of their stores at the lakes. Yeah, I mean, these are extenuating circumstances. We did not foresee that in 2004. We we're leasing the property for a dollar a year, and so I'm wondering whether that can be renegotiated. And if it is possible, then certainly um, I would encourage to look into that. But uh, is that something the city attorney would do, or is that something the council would do? Well, the, the council can obviously direct staff to look into that. That would be something All right. within your purview. Very good. Thank you. Other questions? Council Member Gillette. Thank you, Madam Mayor. If I understand correctly, the action before us tonight, though, is the establishment of the successor agency that's our only action, and that's court ordered. Well, the, the law presumes that the city will be the successor agency just for purposes of confirming that. We recommend if the council so chooses to be the successor agency that they adopt a resolution stating such. Okay, is there, I, this, this whole thing obviously is moving rather quickly and, and with a lot of unknowns. Is there a downside, is there a potential downside that anyone in the brief time they've had for analysis to us doing that? Do we take an action that commits us to something uh, that we wouldn't ordinarily want to do? Or? The way the legislation is worded is that if the city doesn't want to be the successor agency, it needs to adopt a resolution. If that were to happen, then the governor would appoint a three-member panel to serve as the successor agency. Oh, oh, good. The stated, okay, I got it. I, I, I got it. All right. Um, on this long list of uh, what do we do, <coughs> have has a um, has an agenda been started? Uh, have we started to create an agenda of questions? As an example, with our acquisition of and commitment of. Um, west side properties to the Civic Arts Plaza for the purpose of the art museum. Uh, uh, those are um, tentative obligations, uh, commitments have been made and what have you. Uh, do we have a list, I guess, that, that's starting to take shape of what the questions are going to be? Uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, uh, yes. We are compiling a series of lists right now. We've been meeting literally um, every day, um, and we're trying to identify all of our assets. We're identifying all of our accounts. We're identifying all of our agreements, and the, we have to come up with what's called with a, an enforceable um, obligation, uh, a list of enforceable obligations. And so we're going through that. Now there's a new wrinkle because when you have bond issues involved, we have to go through and, and, and look and delineate um, the projects from the bond issues, and we're trying to determine if those are indeed enforceable obligations. Uh, it's not an easy thing. It's not as easy as perhaps you read in the paper where the state says, we just want to take over their assets. What does that mean? This is not a prospective taking where they're going to take future revenues. This is a retroactive reaching into the community's bank accounts and assets and trying to take what they can 
but where there are legal contracts, like, for example, um, if we had a construction project that w was underway and you had a, a legal binding contract, well, then the state can't take that. that. That contract would have to be carried out and implemented. But again, there's uncertainty about, well, what about bond issues? Uh, those were contracts to do things, but we haven't formally entered into an agreement. So we're trying to sort through um, all, you know, the devils in the details. We're trying to sort through uh, all of those. Um, and it is an um, involved process. That's why legislation is being proposed to give us more time to, to do that. One, fi one final question. Uh, the establishment of the two-pass agreement with the Canal Valley Unified School District, uh, what year was that established and how much annually on average have we passed through to Canal Valley School District and, and what happens? Does that just, that just ends? That's a great question. It's approximately about a million two a year, something like that. That's the 5% pass through. That's a, I'd like to point out uh, here in Thousand Oaks, we have very generous pass through agreement, uh, agreements with those agencies that were, were impacted. So there's, there's a wash. Some of them actually come out ahead. So the school district has right now in tow pass, there's about five or six million dollars, a little over six million dollars. And both the, the attorneys for the school district and the city were doing everything we can to protect those assets. Some attorneys are telling us, no, the state gets that. Uh, others are saying, no, those are enforceable obligations. So we're trying to make sense of that. So that six million, we hope and pray that that is protected and that will stay with the school district. Because that's above and beyond their uh, um, uh, Prop 98 uh, guarantee. Okay. And there are a lot of redevelopment agencies where the schools wouldn't, didn't have money like this, but we're, we do have that. So um, that money, we hope, is, is protected. Thank you. Ms. Bill de la Pena. Thank you. I wanted to follow up on something that was mentioned also is the, uh, we had money set aside for the Discovery Center as well as for the Lang Ranch Community Park. Is what happens to, I'm not sure if Lang Ranch was from the development fund? I mean, redevelopment? No, Lane Ranch is not redevelopment money. Okay. Then the Discovery Center, what's going to happen to that? Is that now automatically eliminated? It may be eliminated. We're trying to determine if it's part of the bond issue or not. So it's a, it's a question. It, it probably, well, I'm not going to speculate. It may or may not be eliminated. Yeah, it's just been in a holding pattern for five or six years in, in a holding account, I should say. Yeah, the way the council set that up is that was to... Uh, be sort of a matching grant, if you will, that once monies were raised, this would then be used to help facilitate the project. That money could then potentially be used to pay off some of the obligations that we might have? No, that money would go back to the state. That would not go back. It would go to the state of California for That's what I mean, to, to them. Yeah. Okay, thank it, you. It would not be used in the community, correct. No other questions? Yeah, we have uh, one speaker. Mr. Kidway, you are up. Nick Kidwai, Director of Concerned Citizens of Thousand Oaks since 93, when the redevelopment agency amendment was passed uh, over my objections and uh, was a fraud on the citizens of this great uh, state and uh, the blight findings were issued uh, regarding Thousand Oaks Boulevard which were completely fraudulent. And uh, the reason this great decision, this is the greatest decision uh, to come uh, from the Supreme Court of our great state uh, is beyond our dreams is because of the arrogance and the greed of uh, both the redevelopment association to which our city pays thousands of dollars to be a member uh, who played uh, Russian roulette uh, with the way they approached and everybody knew and the city manager's uh, comments that he surprised uh, uh, the, it, that's what was predicted that it was going to be either all or nothing and I'm glad it was all uh, no reasonable person uh, can say that the business properties on Thousand Oaks Boulevard, uh, Moore Park Road, Newberry Road are blighted and that they need crony capitalism and they need a transfer of wealth from people like me, from average middle class Americans, the 99 percenters to the 1 percent Caruso who 
perfected it from Thousand Oaks 12 years ago and has a dozen of these and has become a billionaire in the process. And it's disgusting. We need new staff people that, that work for the, for, the, for the citizens and not for these uh, sweetheart deals. When you are going to renegotiate the DDA with Caruso, uh, you have every right to ask for a change in the plans. Uh, I'm really surprised that a minority council member is talking about the Discovery Center. The Discovery Center is hogwash. Yeah, they were here. They never even stayed around. They never asked for it because we know it's a $40 million project which the city cannot afford. It's just uh, another way to uh, sidetrack the people and try to uh, uh, get the money because uh, who's going to be uh, against uh, the Discovery Center? The whole issue is uh, going into debt. Uh, which is d destroying our, our, our country. Uh, TO Pass Agreement, the staff is responsible to tell the, the, the citizens and everyone about double dipping, about the impact of, 19, uh, of Proposition 13. I cannot say it in three minutes. If somebody will ask me, I will tell you. That's why the TO Pass Agreement is, is illegal, because uh, uh, I hate to say it, but that's, that's a fact, because uh, the city is, is, has backfilled uh, the schools from the Proposition 13, and the city was giving extra money, and now the party is over. I mean, the city, is, the state is broke, the city is broke, the country is broke, and you folks are still having a picnic as if nothing has happened, and the city manager is just, uh, I mean, making these comments. City manager compares Sacramento to third world dictator. I mean, we need new staff and new council, too. Thank you, Mr. Kidway. Uh, do we have some staff comments from you, Mr. Mitnick? Follow-up? Uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, I, th I think we've been fairly um, complete in the uh, written report as well as the verbal. Um, again, the key issue here is not the efficacy or the effectiveness of the redevelopment agency. It's the state wants the money of local communities, and it's a money grab. It, this is not a redevelopment versus schools issue. Uh, it's the state can't balance its budget and it's turning to local communities. Uh, that, that's what's at stake here. You, the comments about blight, uh, the blight findings were made back in the 70s and 80s when there was truly blight on the boulevard and Newberry Road. And if we're guilty of anything, it's being successful. Uh, through the council's vision, the blight that existed, the above ground utilities, the billboards, the ticky tack development, the rundown buildings, the inadequate infrastructures, all, pretty much been cured or to a large extent. And the redevelopment agency is in its final quarter of its lifespan, and we were in the process of implementing the, the final set, a list of projects. And the boulevard specific plan was finally approved after decades. So it's a shame that it's happening at this time, and the, and the losers are the taxpayers, the school children, and the community, because the projects that would have benefited them are not going to happen. So the blight findings, we, we can certainly, well, we've already addressed that. Um, and we're in, a, we're in a, um, a profound watershed moment here, and we'll do our best going forward, and we'll continue to fight hard for the community to keep your local uh, tax dollars local, and that's, that's the bottom line, and that's where we're at. Thank you. Do we have a motion? Council Member Gillette. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll move the staff recommendation. Comments to the motion? Dr. Glancy? Yeah, just, uh, just to follow up on what staff uh, and city manager has indicated, uh, you know, to the normal um, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith that are living in their community and the, where they read about redevelopment agency, uh, it's been my experience that um, most people don't understand what redevelopment agency does, uh, how it operates, um, the benefits that communities derive from it. Uh, and this really isn't uh, an issue uh, that, uh, from my perspective, is going to generate a lot of public outcry simply because people don't uh, and are not aware of the benefits of redevelopment agencies within the state. Um, to be fair, there have been other communities that have not done a good job of managing their redevelopment agencies. Um, that is why they've kind of been um, in the radar of the state legislature for a number of years. This is not new. Uh, but the city manager, I think, said it best, and I think all Californians and certainly all folks that live in Thousand Oaks recognize that the way the state has managed its fiscal house has been an absolute catastrophe. 
And uh, while we recognize the state has difficult financial issues, the, the governor and the state legislature do not have an easy job. Uh, we at the local level believe that going into local government and taking out local tax increment that is spent locally for the benefit of the residents of our community is the wrong solution. Uh, and there are other solutions that have been offered at the state level with respect to how the state structural finance actually works. And so uh, while I'm certainly going to support um, this legislation, uh, there will be impacts. And I know when we talk from time to time about budgets, um, the general public has been sometime um, deluded with the fact that there's there's threats made about cuts in services, but these are real dollars. As the city manager pointed out, we're not talking about just prospective dollars. These are real dollars that fund real programs. Uh, and some of those programs, likely if this plays out the way it appears to be going, uh, will not continue. Uh, and they affect seniors, they affect schools, they affect public safety. Um, and we have been fortunate to manage our redevelopment in a manner that has provided uh, very good infrastructure for our community. Uh, now that seems to be uh, very much uh, in doubt and in fact likelihood that that will continue um, not, very, not very high. And so um, I think this council has done the best it can. I would encourage the city manager and the city staff to do whatever it can to protect local revenues. I would just remind the community and this council I know is well aware our job is to represent the citizens of Thousand Oaks as a municipal government. The fact that we've been getting money to schools and other agencies, uh, while that is uh, laudable, the fact of the matter is our responsibility to what we were elected to do was to serve the citizens of Thousand Oaks and provide municipal government. And that's where our dollars need to be spent. Um, and so with that, I'll certainly support Mr. Gillette's motion. All right. Vote, please. Motion carries 5 0. Item 10 redevelopment agency reports. There are none. Item, uh, item 12 uh, <laughs> council issues and recommendations. Follow up reports on meetings. There are none. Item 13, do you still have something to say, Mr. City Manager? On the state, on, uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, on the state budget, uh, we, we covered the redevelopment piece. Um, the, the state's also, the, the governor's proposed budget is looking at, um, um, looking at an increased uh, sales tax as well as increased, or actually a partial restoration of the vehicle license fee that may generate some funds. Uh, just a reminder that had the state not cut the vehicle license fee or the sales tax, in the first place, we wouldn't be uh, in the situation that we're in. So we'll continue to monitor the state budget situation and see where it goes. Thank you, Mr. Mitnick. Can I have uh, Mr. Norman please announce the closed session? Thank you, Madam Mayor. After adjournment, City Council will meet um, with conference with legal counsel existing litigation in the case of Langner versus City of Thousand Oaks, case number 56-2011-00401-022-CU-CR-SIM, pursuant to government code section 54956.9A. Also conference with legal counsel for anticipated litigation, significant exposure to litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9B, a subrogation claim by State Farm Insurance Company related to the case of Laveau versus City of Thousand Oaks, case number 56-2011-00395160-CU-PO-SIM. It is not anticipated there will be any reportable action from those closed sessions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Norman. Item 15, public notices. We have none, and we are on uh, our adjournment portion, item 16. Our first adjournment this evening is in memory of Joyce Kripe, one of the city's finest members of the volunteers in policing and the mother of our theater staff person, Carol Kane. Joyce was a member of the Thousand Oaks VIP since the program began in 1955. That doesn't... 
85. Typo, yes, 95. She remained an active member until 2011 when she became ill. Joyce was an exceptional person. She was chosen VIP of the Year in 1997 and was also the recipient of the most inspirational VIP, the Eagle Eye Award, which she was awarded three years, and the Milestone Award for her accomplishment over, of over 20,000 hours of service as a VIP, over 90 hours per week for more than 14 years. That's perhaps a typo also. Born in Boone, Iowa, Joyce and her husband Ed were married for almost 50 years. They were residents of Thousand Oaks for more than 40 years, and together they raised two children in our community. Joyce, a breast cancer survivor, was a founding member of the wellness community of Ventura. Joyce was an inspiration and a true example of volunteerism for all of us. She will be deeply missed by her family, friends, and fellow VIPs. On behalf of the City Council, I would like to express our deepest condolences to Joyce's family. Andy? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, tonight marks the 10th anniversary that we are journeying in honor of Mayor Emeritus Alex Fiore. Alex passed away in 2002, and upon his passing, I asked the council that uh, the first meeting of every year in January, we would adjourn in Alex's honor. He is the only member of this community that is recognized uh, with that honor. And uh, I was uh, glad that the council agreed that reminding the community uh, of individuals who have been so integrally part of our community once a year was certainly the least that we can do. Um, each year, people move in and out of Thousand Oaks. Uh, Alex has passed away since 2002. He last served on the city council in 1994 when I was first elected. So many years have passed, and it's certainly reasonable that residents that live in our community would not be aware of the many accomplishments that Alex and the council achieved uh, and the many benefits that we enjoy today because of his leadership. So each year, I think it's appropriate that we acknowledge Alex uh, for his 30 years of service to this community. He was elected to the original city council in 1964. He served seven consecutive terms, 30 years in office. Uh, during that time, he was best known for a council member who listened. Alex was one of the throwback politicians, if you will, citizen politicians. He worked a full-time job as the vice president of an aerospace company. But each Saturday, Alex would set up a card table at the Jans Mall and he would be there and he would listen and he would listen and he would listen. He'd also do your taxes. He'd give you point, pointers on Little League Baseball and a variety of things. But just imagine 30 years, 30 years every Saturday for four hours listening to his community. He wasn't just somebody that listened, Alex took action. Let me just uh, give you a few of the examples of some of the things that we enjoy today, uh, primarily because of Alex's leadership. Most people are aware of the Wildwood Mesa. Alex the guy that protected that. From time to time, council takes action when we approve developments. We haven't done many now, but Alex actually negotiated developers paying their fare for sh school costs before it became state law. So he was a visionary. The building that we're sitting in, uh, Alex had the vision and, and listening to the community that we needed a Civic Arts Plaza. Uh, and as we've just discussed through our city manager, Thousand Oaks has enjoyed financial stability for uh, literally its entire life. Alex was a financial uh, genius, if you will. That's what he did for a living. And in many ways, our financial strategies and our balanced budgets each and every year are a direct relation to Alex Fiore being on the city council. This is an individual that we've named buildings after, uh, but more importantly, it's important that the community that we enjoy and that we are here um, is recognized through the efforts of Alex and, and others that have served on the council. Finally, I think it's uh, appropriate to recognize Alex's family for the many hours, many days, many years of sacrifice of not having Alex at home, either as a husband or a dad, his wife Katie, um, and the rest of his kids, Tom, Rick, and Norma, all of which are residents here in Thousand Oaks. And so on that, uh, I thank you for adjourning in memory of Mayor Emeritus uh, Alex Fiore. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Fox. We will adjourn to our regular meeting on January 24th, 2012. Everybody have a nice evening.